everyone and welcome to part seven of our old barn it's really beginning to take shape now it's getting quite exciting um let's have a look down here thank you mr fix it mr handyman has become mr fix it he's had a change in career <laughs> from handy to fix it um so henceforth he will be mr fix it right um yeah where are we up to well i think we've more or less finished the old barn last time the old barn itself i really like the addition of the orange that i've added it's more orange than it is on on the picture but i like that we need we need this to draw our eyes so we need some brightness so i, I like that orange uh, and we added all of the side of the barn last time i love this door i really like it and i really like that you might remember that I put some black lines on um, and then painted over them. I can I can still see them, but they're not as um, prominent as I'd wish them to be. The other thing with the barn that need, just needs a tiny bit of um, titivating is this door. It has got some details on, but they're not very clear and it hasn't got a shadow behind it. So we need to address that. So if we get that done, I think we are then pretty much finished uh, with the barn itself and we can move on to this grass now all i will say to you is don't be impatient when it comes to the grass it's a it's a process um and it takes time so we have to allow ourselves the time to do that so i think the first thing i'll do is address the, pro the what the little finishing up bits with the barn and then that's done we're finished with that then we can move on to the grass and put another layer on grass Painting grass is all about layers. Um, we, we, last time we put this on very quickly, in quite a haphazard way, we were really just painting the canvas, putting some colour down there. And we've got that, but now we need to look a bit more closely uh, as to where the dark areas are, where the light dead grass of whatever type it is, and there's some brighter bits. And this bright bit here, which happened by accident really has turned out to be what bob ross would call very happy accident i really like that bright there it it plays really nicely with this bright orange and it really does draw your eye so i'm going to try and keep that there if i can the other thing i would say is i, I don't like this grass there now now that we've got other grass so i will be um doing something with that um, i just i just don't like it um, and then if we get the next layer of the grass in and we've still got time, I will address one of the sides and then we really will feel like we're motoring, won't we? Um, so let's get cracking. I have put out some uh, black acrylic and I just want a very thin, small uh, liner brush, script brush, uh, however you want to call them. Water that black down a little bit. And load your brushes, I've shown you now dozens of times. You should be so proficient at loading script liners by now. So, this has just got some. I'm very. I'm not going to put them all in, I just want to give the idea that some are in there. It's quite a big mouth. That's fine, it just gives the impression that it's corrugated. I'll just draw the brush on these on. Right, that's fine, that's absolutely all. It's just added what it needed, which is fine. So, uh, the shadow of this door, let's have a look, it just goes up into that 
that one fine and straight down and straight up to meet where the doors at the end. So that's a very dark colour. I'll put that in with this door. And the door itself actually needs some attention. It's got details in it, but I suspect when it dried, they just dried back and we haven't noticed up until now. We'll have a, when we come to the very end of all of this, we'll have a kind of round up, see what, see what needs doing, um, you know, finish it off properly. Right, so that's the shadow. That's me sort of finished now with the everyday acrylics. I'm going to move on now to um, my open acrylics because putting all this grass in is quite, um, it takes a long time. And if I don't like a bit and I've got to go back over it or I've mixed some green I particularly like, I want it to be in the golden opens, uh, the golden open paint. So I have got that time. If uh, Another reason is it's decided to be summer here today. Um, we've had some really cold weather in previously in May. And today it's absolutely a glorious day. It's really lovely. Um, but if you're painting with ordinary acrylics, it's a bit of a curse because your acrylics dry so quickly, particularly um, where we're situated. It's there's a, you know it's a lot of light about and it's quite warm, so it's a day for golden opens. If you haven't got them, don't worry. You can either use your ordinary heavy body paint, or you can uh, and or you can put uh, your fluid retarder have some fluid retarder handy so you can uh, use that so there's my golden open palette i can't remember uh if it was on this one that i used it last it may have been may not have been but in either case this has been here for two weeks mr fix it three weeks three weeks and as you can see the paint is just as fresh as when i first put it out which is great I think I've shown you it before. It's sort of, it's a plastic tray. It's got a layer of like thick wadded paper. Yeah, he's nodding. Uh, and then this sort of membrane layer, which looks a bit like greaseproof layer, but it, um, greaseproof paper, but it obviously works slightly differently. Um, how, whatever it is, and the joy of golden opens is still there for us, which is brilliant. Delighted. The other thing that I will say, should you have splashed out on golden opens, is don't rinse your brushes out in water. Don't introduce water to the paint at all. Just pretend you haven't got any water. And if you need to rinse your brushes out or you need to thin some paint out, use the fluid retarder. I'll just show you what, what I use. I'll show you that one as well. Um, this is the one that I use. It's Windsor & Newton Galleria Fluid Retarder. Uh, and another option for you is Golden themselves do a retarder. Additive for slowing the drying time of acrylic paints and mediums. So, you know, read the instructions. I'm sure there's um, an amount that you can use, you know, 20%, 30%, whatever it is, that you can add to your paints that will do the job. Um, for me, I'm just using this one. Uh, this one was a lot more expensive, but I haven't used it yet, so I can't possibly tell you what it's like. There is actually also a... Um, let me turn around. Turn around and talk to you properly. There's also, with Golden Opens, um, I haven't got any. Uh, there's some on its way to me, but I haven't got it yet. Is uh, a bottle of... It's called Open Thinner. And it's formulated to work perfectly with these open paints. So that's my advert for Golden Open. I, no, I don't get paid for it. <laughs> oh, how I wish I did get paid for advertising that. But it's fabulous paint. But you have to be a little bit more patient with it. You know, it's not going to dry instantly. So there are times when it's when you wouldn't want to use it. Right, let's get cracking for heaven's sake. Stop jabbering on. Um, I'm just going to put the details in this door and then I think we are done. Uh, I'll just take a new liner brush. 
I want to use that other one because it's got water on it. The problem with adding water to the um, to the golden open is you then reduce the drying time of the open, which is why you bought it in the first place, to the drying time of water. So you're actually reducing it to drying in the same time frame that the golden heavy body paints. So it's, you're just wasting your money, really. So keep your water away from your open. So this looks like titanium buff. So I'm just going to, I mean, look how wet that is. That, that's just, it's been there three weeks and hasn't been looked at. And it's just wet, wet, wet. It's lovely. So I'll just put some details in uh, down here. Just so I don't make it what it's actually doing. That's amply sufficient. It's, it looks like a door. Oh, by the way, it is a door. Right, okay, so I'm just going to rinse that out in the fluid retarder. Dry it off, and that's good to go in case we need it again. Right, so we're down to the grass now, people. I've uh, traced out this, well, I call it a hitching post. I'm not really sure what it is. I think, it, I think it's a hitching post. I must have picked it up. Yeah, hitching post. So hit, hitch your husband up there or whatever it is that you want to hitch. Um, I'm probably going to leave that actually because I really want to get the grass done. As we said last time, we were on a, a canvas covering mission, but we were still making all our strokes in a vertical way. This time we're going to have a better look at what's where, but we're still going to be doing vertical strokes. But we're going to remember that the further back you get, the more short those vertical strokes need to be. And as we come forward, as you can see on this photograph, you can't really make out um, different strokes of grass there. Blades, blades of grass, thank you. But as you come closer, as you come to this side of the barn, you can just start making them out. And as you come to here, they're very definite. So we have to bear that in mind. These ones here, they're not, they're not really there, but the, the vertical lines are really short. And then they start getting a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and then they're here. So I've got my full array of golden open greens out and yellows and yellow ochre. So, and burnt umber as well, and Mars yellow. So let's see how we get on with the greens. I'm just going to start with this bit here, which is quite a yellowish, it's got a yellow hue to it. Um, but it... I've also, I'll just show you this before we start, and then we really will get cracking. I have laid out a selection of what I would term grass making uh, brushes. I hope that you've got some sort of similar to this, it just aids the process. This brush here is really sort of, I mean, look at it. It came in a pack of three from the pound shop. So it was 33p. And I used it for stenciling actually for quite a while while it was still quite tight. But it's, um, well, it's jiggered now for normal things, but makes really good marks for grass. This is our um, Deerfoot Stippler. It's, it's really good grass. It's good for grasses, it's good for clouds. It's a lovely brush. This, this says Major Brushes number six, and I think I bought it as a stencil brush and I was never particularly happy with it. But now it's all bushed out and gone to pot. It's good for grasses. I mean, it's coming out the feral and everything, but it's good for, um, for what we want. And I've also laid out a couple of these fan brushes. This one's much finer, but this one, it's really spiky. And I think that we could probably get some good marks with that. And I'm going to start with that one now. So we want some yellow. And a little bit maybe of yellow ochre. A little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't have to mix your paints up terribly well. You, you'll get a better result if you if you leave them sort of marbled. Um, and, and they'll mix on the brush or on the, uh, on the canvas. 
So these one where they they will be removed. Kind of to go over the um over the bone. Just gonna put that there as a as a guide because I don't want to break it. Okay. So, so then we come down and there's just a little bit of um darkness in here. Sorry if you can hear someone cutting the grass. I tell you it's turned into summer here, so everybody's doing their outside jobs. Um and then I think we're probably pretty much back into this colour for a little while. It's nice because these aren't completely um, mixed in on the palette. I'm getting areas that are slightly lighter yellow and some areas that are a little bit darker, which is nice. So that then gives way to this quite bright green. So which of my wondrous selection shall I choose? Let me show you what we have to choose from here. This is, this is shocking, really, because you can mix greens perfectly well yourself. Uh, so I've got Jenkins green, which we know is quite dark. Chromium oxide green, dark. Chromium oxide green, thalo green, yellow. Cobalt green and sap green. Well, I like sap green. It's a nice colour. And I like Jenkins green. I think I'm going to just use those. Because I'm familiar with them, I'm familiar with what they do, and I have to get to know those to get to know what how they mix and everything. I'm not familiar. Um, oh well, as luck would have it, we've got some colour out there which looks like chromium oxide and Jenkins green. So I'm just going to put some sap green down, and then I think we have the whole gamut. Right, so as you can see, we've kept our vertical lines quite short, um, but there is bits of this, um, what have I got out? Burnt umber. Yeah, burnt umber. Um, just to add little bits to it. Now, this isn't our final card. <laughs> hate to say this to you, but this isn't the last time, the last time that we'll go over this grass. Um, we'll go back over it and add details, finer details. So we need some green. Let's just pull some of that out. I don't want to let it go to waste if I do. Yeah, that's a nice green for this darker. It's just to protect my eye. So the darker bit comes across here. But all this is made much easier. And it will make the grass much more interesting because we've already got our ground in. I'm being quite faithful to this. There's there's no need to be, to be honest. You know, put in what you think you like, you know, what you want. But I do kind of want to keep this bright. So, you know. If you've got the hang of how grass goes in, skip this bit because it will be dead boring for you. But if you haven't, stick away. So you see, even now, when we come to the front of this, the vertical strokes are getting just a little bit longer. Don't go mad on them, though. You know, the grass here is obviously just lumpy, bumpy, and growing at different heights, etc. 
So I'd like to keep that. So I'm just going to go over that just with yellow. I don't think it makes any difference to the front actually if it's got, if you go over it with your grease. Because it, it very well might be growing up there anyway. That's a nice bright colour. Pleased with that. Just add a little bit of this colour in. So I come across. Not that look quite so stark. So then there's some green. Just pop it between. I got it like that last time. I'll put the green in there. Which is good. I'm just going to pop that in there because I'm getting a bit sort of um, overfilled with paint. Just rinse it out in the fluid retarder. And then there's some. These grasses are, um, well, they're cream really is my best description, but there is sort of a darker colour in at the bottom, I think. Go back to this brush and make it better. This is still wet from the uh, fluid retarder. In places you can do them not exactly vertical, um, particularly as we get closer, you can sort of angle them a little bit if you want to. Don't, don't go mad on the angle. So yeah, we're definitely progressing there. Huh? I'm just going to take a little bit of that yellow and mix it with that little bit of titanium as I'm and this has got some, it's got this sort of colour through it. Don't worry at this stage, it may be a sort of ugly type stage, but we'll get better, you know, we'll get more refined. Not on this pass through. This is as good as it's going to get on this pass through. So I quite like this green. Let's build a little bit up into that. Very much like that with the front door. It's really nice. Realize this isn't the best watching in the world. It's a tutorial within a tutorial because this is how to paint grass. Um, and it's, that is something that is always useful to know. Because then you don't have to run scared of, of landscapes, etc. I'm putting this up over the side of the, of 
real barn because it does grow over the old side, the old side and the new side, um, over the side of the barn. So I want to I want to show that. So I hope it's showing up on. Uh, let's have a look what it looks like. Yeah, I think you can see. There we go. Can you see Mister Mister Fix? I can't see him now. Well, that's the, that's the the thing. Yeah, you can see me. Um, yeah, that's that's a good point actually. That's a thing to remember. We are doing this probably what our eyes are eight inches away, something like that. Never will anybody come and view it, view it that closely. And if they do, then you know, then they'll see what we can see. But you kind of have to paint it, and that's why you'll see artists painting things on an easel, and then they step back and have a look at it. And they, they don't do that just to look artsy-fartsy, although it does. They do it so they will be looking at it from where the viewer will see it. Um, and, you know, sitting here like this, that's not how it will be seen. Although I would like it to look nice, even at this close distance. So in here I've got a lot of this sort of straw straw coloured sort of stuff. Let's just suggest that. I don't know if that's quite dead. Yeah, I think that's quite a nice straw colour there. Some that comes all the way down. These grasses are getting long, by the way. You can you can discern different sort of blades, um, so you can start moving your brush to an angle. Was a lot of difference in how to get some of it to it. Still not quite enough. I think it is giving us an, another layer, and you know, as I surely know by now, acrylics are all about layering. I'm just using the corners of the brush, of a third of the brush, really. I'm not putting the whole fan brush down and drawing it down because that would um, just be more creative. So there's a little bit there, but really I think that would be much, much, much greater as it is in the picture. So I'm hardly know of here. <laughs> We're going very light. So this is kind of our third, it was this darker one, then the lighter one, now we're going in with this. And it's this that gives it depth and credibility really. So just not all the same. I, I, I like that passage, it's quite nice. Um, then we have green here. Just a little bit of that to be safe, I think. Um, 
my lips being so little here. Something about teeth. Mm, but softer than my hands are going to be right up here. Hey, that's good. So I'm hoping, really hope that this looks like um, it's shaping up to be something that you can do, something you understand what you're doing, why you're doing it. See how the earth is showing up. So this is not the last piece with of this bush. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to. I'm going to move on to this big one. This is a sort of right up in the weed. You can use this brush now because the grasses are longer. Jenkins in there. Oh no. It's too big. Too big and bulky for what I need. So we're back to this. Let's add a little bit more Jenkins to it. Jenkins. When you look at this on your picture, you see that this green spread, uh, yellow spread through it. Um, there's not much you can do about that, that at the moment because this is open paint um, and you can't really sort of over, over it till it dries. That's kind of the length of the grasses that you want in the moment. So I'm going to move the weed over to the right hand. And then it's we're back to a sort of yellowy yellow again. So I'm mixing, I think it's primrose yellow um, through my sleeves, through the Jenkins green. Just for this section down here. It doesn't matter if you go over the door, it really doesn't matter um, because we'll be, the brown will easily cover this. Here, I'm over here in the picture. It's just not standing up enough. It's yellow and white in there, which is really not the right one. Exactly. This must just be identical, but with a shadow of it. Yeah. So 
that you're really doing a stretch. This is doing a stretch. It's just the same, but then it's for the shoulder. The thing to do is carry on with this. Got an area here that I think I might have um, forgotten about. I think it was the land that time forgot. Which way? Who knows? Having sunglasses on because it helps in real life. Right, so let's have a look at this circle. What do I do? What do I do with you here? So I think. Right, I think it's it's clear now. So we need to move move ourselves to this section now. Well, I do really like that very bold bit just at the door, but I do think it looks just a bit staged. Really needs. So let's see if I can mix up some really nice bright blue. Enough. I'm just going to, I'm going to add some hand sealing to my palette. We can all join in the mix. So I'm just going to put a little bit over this. So you can still see that bright, which is what we want. That looks slightly more credible. Remember that this middle distance, his strokes are still quite short, they're not down to the long ones here. Um, and then we want some more of this straw cord. So it's a tiny bit of of burnt umber. quite as much as I'd like it to. So add some more titanium white into that. I might actually even add a bit of 
looking at. I'm referring to this, it's titanium buff. Sorry if I've referred to it as titanium light, it's titanium buff, which is an off-white colour, which you can achieve by taking titanium white and adding uh, yellow ochre to it. It's just, it comes in a tube and it's a really useful colour, but you can, as I say, you can make it yourself. And I've got that. Yeah, that's an excellent light. So I have this area here. It's darker. So then, let's be brave. I've got a bit of um, burnt umber in our brush because there are some sort of tussocky bits. That's my description of them. have to get past the ugly stage in paintings. Um, it will surely come. It always comes. Um, when you look at it and think, oh my goodness, I'll never pull this back. This can't, this is not right. You will. It's fine. Paint on, wrap on, and it'll all be all right. Okay, so how's that looking? Not so bad. It's not looking too bad at all. Let's have a darken that. Oh, no, letter. Yeah, that's looking all right. It's not looking all right. Yeah, I like, I like that. It's kind of coming along. All I would say to you is be patient. Just just be patient. It'll all come clean in the wash if you're just patient. I don't think there's too much more I want to do to that. I want to put the do this, put this bit in, um, and it'll need a wash over it. When everything is dry. I'm going to try to add titanium light to this. Titanium buff. Titanium buff. Not white. For heaven's sake. A monkey would have learnt by now. You're very quiet today, Mr. Fixer. What are you up to? You're scheming. Always scheming. Yeah, you can always tell when he's scheming because he was really quiet and you say to him, What's the matter? Nothing. Mm. Just uh, that sort of nothing again. Then along comes, in a few days' time, then along comes some sort of new camera or new lighting or something, you know, because I know what he's scheming. I'm just going to put these in. I'm going to drag them down to the bottom. So these are the grasses that you can see. Do you think everybody's fallen asleep? Entranced. Entranced. Actually, doing grasses is very hypnotic. There's, there's kind of nothing really very much that can go wrong. You know, as long as you make your lines small, there, get bigger, get bigger, get bigger, go big or go home. My philosophy on life. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm living up to it. Okay. 
So these are lights uh, down here and there's you know, some single sort of grasses and a melange. Oh, that was to fix it. Ah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, me and my fancy words. A nice melange of our greens and um, titanium. Both. Both. You don't remember, I think I'm four. You'll get. No! <laughs> no, that no, not even as a reference. No. So just suggest these are here. We'll be, we're, as I say, we're coming back over, and we will be putting the big details in. I'm wondering about this. This just seems to be a bit, a bit left, a bit left out. Right, well, I, I think I'm finished with that for that uh, pass by. I'll just put some more white over there. Because we want this to be really quite light because it's going to be the dark dark next to it. The grasses here are so large and, and so visible to us that we are going to put those in uh, individually. You'll be glad to know. <laughs> uh, with a paintbrush. <laughs> So I'm just going to hold that over there and just see if I can knock that back ever so slightly. It's just a bit in your face. That's okay. Right, okay, so that's us at the end of our that pass of grasses. Um I hope you can see where it's going and see it's looking nice I think. So uh, I'm not sure how much time I've used etc etc so I'll either see you in a minute or I'll see you in a couple of days. Right so here we are. Um, I took advantage of the break and had a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, so I'm back and I'm thinking now the way forward we can't really do too much to this grass we need to leave it to dry. I think it was worthwhile exercise using the open. All my mixes stayed open right to the end, which is great. It, they wouldn't normally have done. So I think what we're going to do now is do this side part, right from the roof, where it joins the roof, right down. And it's, if you remember, we, I asked you if you would lighten the whole image or lighten the shadows of the whole image, shall I say. And we had, we now have this reference picture, which is much more helpful to us than the original one, which was just dark. Could have just painted brown on it and that would have been it. But no, we want details. So, um, starting at the top here, I think we need, we probably need raw umber, burnt umber, some sort of violet colour, and plenty white and titanium buff. So let's make sure that we've got those out in our palette. I need a little bit of purple. The palette's now pretty mixed up with greens, but hopefully we'll find some areas. If not, we'll mix them on a plate. Uh, just make sure I'm sure I've got enough titanium buff. Um, let's put some Mars yellow out. Oh, I've already got some out. Uh, and some raw umber, I think, might be a help to us. Oh, 
Look at my lovely paints. Can you see my lovely paints? I love them so much. <laughs> Right, so let's put out a little bit of raw umber, <clears throat> just for any bits that are really dark. Um, we need some purple because we we implemented purple on here just to give it a, it gives it a really nice aged look. And oddly enough, in artificial light, I didn't read as that mauve colour at all. Um, as as you know, I keep my paintings that I'm doing on the mantelpiece so I can look at them all night long and wonder uh, what to best way to approach certain things let's say or if I'm happy with what I've done um, and when when it comes time to switch the artificial lights on this purple no longer exists which is strange very strange oh yes you're right it might still be wet in parts so let's not uh, let's not lay things on it's not a good idea right so let's start with this bit up here which I think for that we need uh, I'll use a three eighths, no, it's a half inch, so angle shader. And I think really we just we need to go kind of around it. There's another, there's a dark bit in there. Just, just be governed by what's what you're looking at. So, you know, where do I put it? Let's go as straight as you can down there. Doesn't matter if it's not dead straight. It's a very old thing that we're painting. And this pulls back in. This is probably a good idea to second coat. I'm careless with painting like that. I'm sky. In fact, I think the thing to do probably um, with those areas is I'm going to give them a coat of ordinary heavy bodied um, white and then I'm going to leave it that will be that will be it for today and then we'll come back to the two sides I'm going to also paint that up as well and um, do the two sides and finish the grass off so forgive me that's kind of it for today really apart from you don't need to watch me paint these white bits out. So sorry about that. I will catch you the next time when we well when we'll be getting pretty much finished really. Um getting excited now. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon. Bye. Me and the boys were sitting around drinking, we was talking about things that we was thinking when all of a sudden what comes out of Bill's mouth? Said I'm getting old and fat and slow and I don't recover like I did before from nights of rabble, rousing and too much fun. Well, I looked around and we all agreed and I had a drink and I ordered three and I staggered back.